All right, today we're going through 20 simple changes everyone needs to make in Gmail. These settings will speed up load time, declutter your inbox, and even strengthen your privacy. As much as Google will allow anyways. So let's get started. First up, within Gmail settings, under the General tab, press Command or Control F and type in snippets to jump down to the snippets option here and turn this off. This disables that one line email preview, which most of us never read anyways, and it just ends up cluttering up our screen. Next, by disabling hover actions, we remove the quick access buttons that appear when hovering over emails. As you'll see later in this video, there's a much quicker way to access these settings, and I found that my inbox loads faster when these hover actions are disabled. While we're here, let's make sure our default reply behavior is set to reply instead of reply all, you'll see why in a bit, and that our undo send period is set to the maximum 30 seconds. This basically just holds your composed emails for 30 seconds before they're sent, allowing you to stop send if slash when you decide not to commit career suicide. I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but don't forget to scroll all the way down and click save changes whenever you make a change under the general tab. Moving on, for button labels, this is more of a personal preference, but I found a lot of people prefer text to appear instead of icons at the top of their email menu bar since there's a small lag when they have to think about what the icon represents. And of course, keyboard shortcuts should be enabled and my favorite shortcuts are pressing K to jump to the next email without archiving, shift T to add an email to your Google tasks over here, press E to archive and move to the next email, press V to label and archive in one step, press L to add or remove a label from an email, press B to snooze an email to a later time, and of course, press R to reply to the sender only, or press A to reply all. If you're not jumping automatically to the next email when you press K, E, or V, you have to first go to the advanced tab under Gmail settings uh, for auto advance, uh, enable this, and click save changes. After that, go back to the general tab here, and let's go to auto advance. Go to this option here and select go to the next newer conversation and scroll down and click save changes. Pro tip, this setting lets us follow one of the golden rules of inbox management where each email should only be processed once. We always start at the bottom of our inbox and we work our way up. I'll leave a link down below if you're interested to learn more about this task zero workflow. In the meantime, back under the general tab, let's jump to importance signals for ad, uh, for ads rather. You wanna click the link here and it'll bring you to this page where you can actually turn off personalized ads by clicking turn off. And this applies to all ads you see across all Google sites and apps where you're signed in. And after that potentially inconsequential attempt at sending less data to Google, we wanna go to the nudges option here, still under general tab, and uncheck both of these settings. So Gmail tries to be helpful and notifies us when it thinks there's an email we need to follow up on, but I found that to be more annoying than helpful. Scrolling all the way down to the signature section, I recommend checking insert signature before quoted text in replies, uh, to give that illusion that we're always typing our signatures out as part of our email body, as opposed to a separate section. After clicking save changes, head on over to the chat and meet tab, and if you want a cleaner layout in Gmail, you want to turn off chat and hide meet. That sounds so weird. Hide the meet section. That's, that's even worse. Hide the Google meet section in the Gmail main menu. That's literally what it should say here. Anyways, here's a before and after. Uh, as you can see, we just got rid of the extra column on the left. I personally prefer this since I use the standalone chat app and I just use Meet in my browser. By the way, if you wanna receive an insanely actionable Google Workspace tip every week, I'll leave a link to my newsletter down below. Back in Gmail settings, we head on over to the Labels tab and these settings here dictate how clean slash cluttered your uh, label list will look on the left here. So um, this is personal preference, but unless you're actively using the star or mark as important um, features in Gmail, I recommend hiding those two. Hide chat, show if unread, scheduled and draft emails, and then I hide all mail, spam and trash. Again, this does not mean, hiding does not mean delete. You can easily find these hidden system labels by clicking more. 
The whole point is to keep the most frequently accessed system labels up top um, to keep our inbox nice and tidy. Next, I hide all categories because I do not like Gmail labeling and tagging emails for me. I'd much rather create my own labels and filters. Speaking of filters, if we head on over to the filters um, tab, if you scroll down, you'll see that you're able to import other people's filters. So if you wanna make a copy of my Gmail filters, I'll leave a link down below to my completely free workspace toolkit. Next up to enable one of my favorite time-saving features, head on over to the advanced tab and enable the templates feature and click save changes. Think of an email you send on a regular basis. For me, it's a weekly performance report. So I draft up the template, uh, including the email subject line. And then I click the three dots here, templates, uh, save draft as template and save as new template name this and click save. So the next time I need to write that email, I press C to compose, three dots, templates, and I can bring this up right here. Pro tip, if you for whatever reason are still not using text expanders, you can use the templates feature to save the most common prompts you use while you're in your inbox to decrease the friction of using AI. Speaking of AI, before I forget, if you're a paid user of Google Gemini, you wanna to go to the general tab under settings and turn on these two uh, settings here, like turn on smart features and personalization, both of these, to enable Gemini in Gmail Drive and all the other Google Workspace products. I have no idea why Google decided to put a Gemini setting here. And before we move on to settings in the Gmail mobile app, just in case you're curious, under the themes tab, I am currently using the minimalistic Android theme. Within the Gmail mobile app, there are a couple of things you wanna do on both iOS and Android. First, under the swipe action setting, I have my right swipe set to archive and left swipe set to move which adds a label and archives in one step. This allows me to organize my emails while I'm commuting so that when I get back to my desk at work, I know which emails require action. The conversation list density only applies to the Gmail mobile app, so you can choose a different view than what you have on web. And don't judge me for this inconsistency, but uh, I actually enable chat and meet within Gmail on mobile, even though I use separate apps on desktop. I just think it's lower friction to have all three in one view here. If you're using an iPhone, you'll see an additional option that allows you to pick the default app when opening links in Gmail. I always select ask me which app to use every time so that I can use a different browser for some specific searches. But if you have nothing to hide, uh, you can just pick one default app here. Last up for iOS users under data privacy, turn off report additional diagnostics, but keep the two smart features settings on if you plan on using Gemini in your Gmail mobile app. If you found these tips helpful, you might want to check out my Google Workspace playlist. See you on the next video. In the meantime, have a great one.